In this video we will look at the contour generator in Power3D and we will learn um, how to use it and how to produce uh, contours. And what you can see right now is that I can just uh, change my uh, section planes, I can generate new contours and I can also just apply something like uh, a shell modifier on top to define thicknesses for my contours in however what kind of way I would like to have it. Okay, let's start from scratch. What we have here is a 3D model of one of my students, Marianne Stadt. And uh, we would like to uh, section in this model. So the first thing obviously we need is a model. And the sec uh, next thing we need is uh, a sectioning plane. I just uh, draw this next to my model. We can just see they're both uh, here in my, uh, in my front view. And the first thing we do is we c uh, create uh, different uh, uh, amount of sectioning planes for our um, contour generator and for this we go into power 3d I just open uh, create parametric array I would like to have an array I'll just call this uh, check sectioning plane and uh, I don't want to keep the original object let me just uh, say we want to have 12 uh, sectioning planes and uh, we go into create and Power3D settings uh, are opening and here we go and uh, the next thing is uh, what we need is we have to uh, uh, also uh, give this 3D model into uh, Power3D but we don't want to have an array so we just open Power3D again and we go only into assign controller and let's just say uh, sectioning uh, uh, model and uh, we go into create and uh, here's a question if uh, we want to uh, away also the information in editable mesh actually we just want to work on uh, the poly level so in this terms we say uh, no so we save a little bit uh, of information and if we look at uh, our power 3d settings we have our section in playing and we have our section in model and this is what we are working with uh, now the next minutes if we now select our uh, sectioning planes uh, with uh, a window crossing switched on, we just see that we have already 12 objects, but they are now just on top of each other and uh, we obviously have to uh, um, produce a distance. And there are many things of doing this, also many, many ways of producing sectioning planes. I just do it in a really visual way, you can also do it in a mathematical way. But what I just do, I use my transform and I just uh, add uh, and transform, I add uh, a linear controller, uh, double click, and uh, here we go. And what we see right now is that all my section uh, sectioning planes are just uh, uh, next to each other. So I take the sectioning plane two, I just switch on my snap toggle, and I just move it to onto on top of the first one. And the next thing I just this and if I go into uh, update uh, update controller then you can already see that I set up my sectioning planes uh, next to my 3d model before I continue there's one thing I want to do I just don't want to cut uh, exactly through the top surface I just really want to cut through this object so uh, right mouse click uh, in my uh, front view I just say I move this thing probably uh, zero point uh, five millimeters uh, okay uh, in the one direction uh, so zero one centimeters a minus in uh, down and uh, probably this one I just want to move uh, five millimeters uh, point five uh, millimeters up and I go again into um, update controllers and what I can just see that it now really cuts through my model and not uh, through the top and the lower surface which I actually don't want and this also can cause calculation problems. Okay in Power3D I zoom out a little bit and uh, what I have to do is I can just go into this uh, add function add power and there here is this contour generator node I will open it and uh, here we go and what I have to do is I first have to say uh, connect the power node which is actually my sectioning model I just go into power power node and connect it to the power node of my 
sectioning model and if this just uh, um, highlights green then you can uh, connect it that's really important if it highlights red then obviously you can't connect it and the next thing I have to do is uh, for the transform and this is also a position where you just can add uh, controller so what I do right now here is I just move it a little bit to uh, to the right I just uh, like I already said I just uh, use it in a really visual way so I produce another uh, parametric way you can also just uh, uh, work more in an abstract way so you don't need the section in planes anyhow I would like to connect it to my section in planes and for this I need a controller I need this I enter para parametric array link controller because double click I just want to connect it to this kind of parametric um, uh, array my section in planes and if I uh, cross from left uh, from right to left I can just select it and just move them a little bit to uh, to the right side to uh, to connect it a little bit uh, to see it a little bit better I again connect it with my wire and it connects green perfect and here we go and the last thing I just go I just go into uh, update selected controller and we look at our um, uh, we look at our sectioning tool uh, right now a little bit uh, closer if I choose my um, contour generator my sectioning tool I can't see anything because first I have to uh, uncheck all my um, uh, all my parameters and if I did this I unchecked it in parametric section and also in uh, parametric contour I can just uh, see my settings and the first thing I have to be aware of in my count I have to enter the same number of section planes sectioning planes like in my um, in my array here otherwise it doesn't work and uh, I did a one dimensional array so I just leave it like this and I would also just recommend that you leave this uh, weld vertices and the only thing we just have to do is just go into generate contours now and okay there's already one mistake I made uh, if you see uh, a node or um, a controller red then it just means that you have to update this I just choose transform I, and I go into a uh, update and if I now choose again my uh, parametric uh, array contour controller uh, then I would expect if I go into generate contours now that it's working properly so always keep an eye on the colors if there's something red then you specifically have to update this controller otherwise uh, there is a mistake okay what we can do is we can just uh, select the power members and if I move them to the right you can see that our sectioning already works really well and I'll just go into uh, undo so that at, uh, again at the same position so I think this was already pretty much successful okay in this uh, video we want to optimize basic things and uh, we don't uh, we don't want, uh, want to work on this optimization at the beginning it's another example we work on a little bit later uh, what we want to do is we were already aware of that I have to set the count 12 uh, to the same amount of uh, my um, my uh, sectionings and uh, there's something like a really good new tool in Power 3D which I can just use uh, that I don't have to keep my eye, uh, eye on that I always have the same number it's this array size and this is really handy I just open this and um, what I can do is I can just uh, connect my para node here with my sectioning planes so uh, this is this one and then it just creates a new power node and this new power node I just connect with my uh, contour generator also very good and uh, when I now go into update then you can just see I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 um, 10 sectioning planes and uh, we have this number in my sectioning planes here and we also have this number in my uh, contour generator so this is the first way of optimizing so we don't have to keep an eye on the amount of sectioning planes to change over the same number and if I now go into uh, update all controllers you can see that this is a really easy way of, uh, uh, of, uh, of doing it so with my uh, section in planes what I can do right now I can probably uh, choose the top one and I just uh, turn the top top one a little bit turn it like this 
and I go again into uh, update uh, all controllers and then I choose my uh, contour rendering tool and I go into generate contours now and we just see what's happening and we can just see that I now have these uh, tilted uh, sectionings and uh, we also see that it's definitely in this case really important that we move our sectioning planes uh, just move them here onto my 3D model because then uh, it creates a different result because it uh, depends on the position and just because we had completely horizontal sectioning planes before you can position them wherever you want them but in this case uh, it's clear that uh, it's related to, uh, to the angle and if I choose this again you can uh, see it uh, in a better way I just choose them and move them a little bit then select all of them right, like this and you can also see that something like this works properly what you can also do of course is just go into a uh, rotation and probably and um, yeah probably even in uh, x y and z direction you just go into a uh, check all and then you checked uh, all x y and z, uh, z direction you just can add one controller for example like a random controller r e n d and now i have my random controller double click and um i'll go out as an instance doesn't uh, doesn't matter in this case and i just choose an angle between one and 90 degrees i go into uh, update this controller and you see it's completely uh, um, um, randomly produced uh, picture I can just uh, click it several times and just say okay I really like this one and if I now go into um, generate uh, contours now we can just see that it also does this one and again I just move this to my position of my model I go into generate contours now and I move my objects again a little bit then you can just see, then select all of them actually that it works uh, quite well okay I increased uh, the amount of section planes to 40 and there's one thing I already could have done better in my video uh, moving or selecting my objects like this is not the perfect way of doing it I can also just go into uh, power sectioning and I just select my uh, power members with this little button and that's definitely a much better way of selecting my uh, whatever kind of power members uh, members I have okay what you want to look at is uh, that uh, moving things from A to B is not really nice and also the next step I would like to work on this I would probably like to uh, add something like a thickness on it and we just uh, see how we can do this actually and what we can do is we can just add a parametric array a new parametric array node into uh, Power3D I just do it right now and I can choose between copy instance and reference which is actually the same features like in 3D Studio Max I go into reference and this is my um, parametric um, array uh, I just call it um, uh, reference shell and uh, what I can do is I can just uh, connect my node with my uh, contour, um, uh, contour generator very nice and if I go into select power members then you can see that it already produced something I just move it to uh, to the left and uh, here we go these are my section planes which you see right now and uh, what I would like to do this because these are just only spline lines I would like to give this a thickness and we just see how we can do this in the next step okay there's a really nice uh, button uh, select the first member in a way if you do this and in uh, 3D Studio Max you go into your modify um, menu uh, you can already see that this is a reference you can see it with a gray line you can just uh, add a shell modifier and I just add a shell modifier with uh, 
uh, one millimeter uh, thickness because my model is only 20 centimeters high and uh, there's one more thing you have to do we have this reload, reload properties and if I click on reload properties uh, this one um, modifier will just add uh, to all the other um, uh, other power members. We just do this right now and it asks me if I would like to access to all vertices and edit to a uh, spline. I think I don't need this actually uh, because we just want to work on the cell shell function and what you can see right now is a really nice uh, 3D model with uh, sectioning planes uh, done with uh, the new contour um, generator in Power 3D. And the best thing is you can just go into your new uh, parametric array reference shell and just choose my uh, shell function and uh, in zero and in inner amount I didn't add any value, I just add a value in my outer amount and I can just also just say I want to change the thickness and for example just use pattern controller and I uh, use the pattern controller and just say uh, the first one is uh, one millimeter and the second one is 0 0.1 and the second one is 0 0.5 and I go into uh, update and then we can just see that uh, uh, every, every second one has a different thickness or you can just say uh, I just would like to use a random controller again or whatever kind of uh, uh, thing you want to work with to change the thickness and you have a random between uh, 0 0.01, a really thin one, and 0 0.5 and you go into a generate and you can just see that it just generates different kind of thicknesses and uh, produces really nice models and uh, you can also go back and just change uh, 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 change the uh, sectionings and just uh, go in again into your reference and you have a really good and nice workflow uh, uh, when you use these kind of things in Power3D. Thanks for watching. Okay, one more thing uh, which is really nice to add at the end because right now you have your um, parametric array reference uh, node and it just uh, produces all these nice uh, section in place but they just intersect and uh, they are single, uh, uh, single objects and I would like to have this as one object and all these intersections a little bit like ProBoolean have to be, um, should be removed and there's a really nice tool. Uh, you can go into add-ons and just say snapshot and uh, you can just connect the node with Power, uh, Power 3D. So now you have the uh, different kind of settings. Combine results of all nodes into single object. This is what we would like to have and if you choose between editable poly and uh, editable mesh then in editable mesh you have the option of say perform boolean operation with all members and this is really great because this means it calculates all the intersection and deletes all the parts of the 3D objects so you have a really nice uh, union uh, object and you can also then just say at the end you go into move uh, snapshots so uh, at the end it's also positions differently and if I now go into generate snapshots you obviously have to wait a while because it's quite complex operation and after some seconds or, or minutes it depends on the uh, complexity of your uh, computer and uh, of your 3D model and the speed of your uh, computer you just get this one which is moved 10 centimeters uh, away I just go into isolate selection what we see is I think for this complexity pretty stunning you can just move in or uh, choose go into wireframe mode and you can just see that it calculated all these intersections and uh, looks really chaotic now because it's such a complex shape but you have an uh, idea, especially for example, if I move to uh, this part, that uh, it's calculated it uh, properly, and uh, you have a completely clean, uh, clean uh, object and a single object done out of 40 planes, completely randomized uh, in space. Thanks for watching.